What is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket? Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket is a steel roller coaster located at Universal Studios Florida in Florida, USA. The ride opened to guests as one of the most technologically advanced roller coasters of its time, featuring customizable on-ride music, LED lighting, and on-ride video capture of guests as they hurtle around the track. Rocket opened to visitors on the 19th of August 2009, several months behind schedule and at the cost of roughly 45 million US dollars. Construction of the attraction, originally codenamed Project Rumble, began in May of 2008 with hopes to open the ride for April of the following year. However, difficulties within the ride's design led to delays surrounding the vertical lift hill. Eventually, once it did open, the ride experienced further downtime throughout its inaugural season. In spite of all this, the attraction we have today wasn't what Universal Studios Florida originally had in mind all those years ago. In 2007, Hollywood Dream The Ride opened at another of Universal's theme parks, Universal Studios Japan. This hypercoaster allowed guests to experience weightlessness as they soared through the layout. And, similar to Rocket, it features customizable on-ride music. After its success, Universal planned to construct a similar attraction over in Florida. However, the coaster's designer, Bolliger and Mabillard, were too busy with other orders to fabricate Universal's ride. As a result, a different company was chosen to construct a new attraction, Mara Rides. Except, naturally, they couldn't offer the same roller coaster. Instead, Universal Studios Florida constructed the world's largest version of Mara's flagship thrill model, the X-Car Coaster. This ride sees guests seated in small trains as they navigate a multitude of steep drops and tight turns very different to Japan's Hollywood dream. Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket offers a unique experience which begins with the ride's loose theme, music. After guests navigate the queue line, they enter the station building. To improve capacity, the trains continuously move through the station platform, reducing dispatch time. Visitors step onto a moving platform, allowing them to board one of the seven trains that navigate the circuit. Each one consists of two cars, which seat riders in three rows of two. This leads to a total of 12 guests per train. It's here that the ride's theme comes into play. Once visitors are seated, they lower their lap bars and are each presented with a touch screen. This screen allows them to choose one of 30 different songs split across five various genres to play throughout the ride. Each seat houses its own speakers within the headrest, allowing each individual rider to listen to a different piece of music. Additionally, the track of the ride has been filled with sand, reducing the roar of the train and making it easier to hear your desired song. If none of the 30 songs appeal to you, by pressing and holding on the ride's logo for 10 seconds, guests enable a 10-digit keypad which can be used to access a selection of hidden tracks beyond the original 30. To learn more about this cheat, head to the link in the description below. Once ready, riders dispatch from the station building, triggering their song to begin. On top of this, guests start to be recorded via a small camera implemented into the row in front of them. This video can then be purchased after their ride. The trains begin to ascend the ride's vertical lift hill, placing guests directly on their backs. Not only does this make for a more thrilling start to the attraction, but means visitors climb 51 meters high faster than normal. The trains then quickly crest the hill and plummet down the first drop. It's here that riders reach their top speed of 105 kilometers per hour. Immediately after, the trains enter a world's first element, a non-inverting loop. Guests traverse what initially appears to be a traditional vertical loop before twisting to the right through the top of the element. Interestingly, Mara Rides patented this exact shape of element. As a result, other companies must pay Mara to use that element or create a misshapen version of the loop, circumventing the patent altogether. Once navigated, the trains climb into one of Rocket's many mid-course brake runs. A short pause later, riders dive through a hole in a nearby building and enter another signature element, the treble clef. During this maneuver, visitors complete a left-hand helix followed by a fast stall turn. Another mid-course brake run later, the trains drop to the left, fly through an S-hill, remain low to the ground and snap into an overbank turn. At this point, they ascend into another mid-course brake run. Riders then navigate a series of quick S-bends before entering an inclined loop. The ride experience comes to an end after the last mid-course brake run with a small speed hill leading visitors into the final brake run. 
Throughout the entire ride, the trains navigate 1,158 meters of trek within approximately 70 seconds of actual ride time that includes all of the mid-course brake runs. Speaking of those, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket features four of them, breaking up the ride experience drastically. As hated as they are, these provide a necessary function by allowing more trains to run on the circuit at once. This means that Rocket has a large throughput of 1,850 riders per hour, which is required at a busy Universal theme park. As stated earlier, Universal, and more so Mara Rides, ran into difficulties when constructing their new ride. At the time, it was alleged that Mara were attempting to implement new anti-rollback devices onto the attraction's lift hill. This would have most likely allowed the train to be safely reversed down the lift hill in case guests had to be evacuated from the ride. Unfortunately, the company's new designs weren't compatible with the heavier weight of the train. As a result, traditional devices were then placed onto the lift hill prior to opening. However, because of this, Universal has always struggled with routine evacuations of guests when the train stops in a vertical position on the lift hill. Originally, the park would winch the train to the apex of the hill before allowing guests to disembark and ride an elevator back towards the ground. Though, in 2017, friction brakes were added to the entirety of the first drop. If a train becomes stuck on the lift hill, operators will winch it over the top before using the brakes to cause it to stop at the bottom of the first drop. Here, guests can be evacuated, this time much closer to the ground. Overall, opinions on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket are mixed. Some riders, particularly enthusiasts, dislike the amount of mid-course brake runs, stating that they hinder the actual ride experience, while many others applaud the ride for its ability to choose a soundtrack, further adding to its uniqueness. Would you like to see more rides be built with this innovative feature? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all next time. A huge thanks goes to our supporters over on Patreon, including Jamie Turbill and Simon Ward. If you'd like to learn more about how you can directly support the channel, head to patreon.com forward slash coasterbot.